Hey guys, welcome back. Um, and if you're new, my name is Brooke. And if you see by the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about um, my birth story with my first child. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. Um, so to start off, uh, I was 18 years old when I found out I was pregnant with my first child. I was in college. Um, I was in my first semester. And yeah, I was thought I was invincible. Um, I wasn't on birth control or anything like that. I was being, I, I would say I was being a pretty normal college student first year, you know, doing the partying, drinking, and um, having unprotected, um, you know what, and yeah, so I thought that it would never happen to me, well, it did, and that's that, so um, we won't get into that, but um, I was, uh, I woke up one morning, and my stomach was just, like, really gurgly, and, like, I don't know, it was just, I felt weird, I felt different, and then it just dawned on me for some reason, I was just like, I haven't got my period for a while, and I was just kind of like, I feel like I should take a pregnancy test, and so, um, one of my friends at the time, I had told her what was going on. And basically, she was like, hey, well, I have a pregnancy test in my um, in my car that I have left over. And no, she wasn't pregnant. It was just, oh, I don't know. But anyways, um, she had one left over. So she was like, hey, let's, let, I'll go get it, and then you can take it. So I took it in the one of the bathrooms in the dorm, and it was like less than a minute. It, I don't even know if it was like 30 seconds and it came out positive and I was like I didn't really know what to think I was just like uh I didn't really think that was going to happen so yeah I think and um I had gotten a box of three, and so she decided that she wanted to take one just to compare. I don't really know why, but that's what happened. Um, and I took two of them. And again, hers came out negative, and mine both came out positive. And I think my friend at the time was a little freaked out. Um, and I was just kind of in that shock phase where you don't really have a lot of emotions yet. Like, it hasn't really fully hit you. Um, and so we basically drove, um, we drove back to the dorm and I had called my mom and I had told my mom, she was at work at the time, so she couldn't really talk, but I said, Hey mom, I'm pregnant. Basically. I didn't really beat around the bush. I just told her I was pregnant. And she said, well, um, long story short, I mean, we talked for a few minutes, but she basically told me to go get an abortion. Because I was young and made a stupid decision and I was a little bit shocked and I was kind of upset that she said that and um, that she didn't really support me. So I then called my sister and she reamed me out pretty good. She um, told me that I was an idiot, that I was stupid and she kind of, you know, she swore at me and she said, you know, you were supposed to be the good one and you were supposed to do the right things and go to college and get an education and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, you need to, you have your whole life, at, oh, you have your whole life out of you and you need to go get an abortion. And I said, whoa. And I think at that point I was overwhelmed and I was confused about why these people that loved me and supported, or I thought supported me, were telling me to go get an abortion. Um, and so I kind of lost it at that point, and I realized, like, whoa, this is real, and I don't know what I did, and I don't know what's going to happen, and 
there's just a lot of different things that were going through my head and I was really young so I basically went back to the college and a lot of this from here on out is a blur um, but I remember being in I mean I I think there was like a, a staircase um, in the college because there was multiple levels and I ended up falling to the floor and I was in fetal position and I was just bawling my eyes out and I don't remember how long I was there but I remember just being in that position and just crying and crying and I think I was praying and I was like why is this happened, happening to me and I don't know um, but I made the decisions and now I was realizing that I had to face reality and I had to um, figure out what I was going to do. And I'm not going to lie, um, abortion definitely did come across my mind, I think just because there was people that were pushing me towards that. But also, um, I knew who I was as a person and I wasn't a bad person. I'm not a bad person. Um, I was raised right. I was raised uh, knowing right from wrong. Um, I was raised Christian and I made mistakes and I was just being a young kid I think and um, all I know is when I had told my dad um, he obviously was very disappointed in me um, and he he told me, he said, abortion isn't an option, and you know that, and um, basically you either, you grow up and take responsibility for your actions, or you give this child up to, for adoption to a family that can't have children, and that can raise this child um, in a healthy home, and so... I had gone back and forth for a couple weeks and definitely abortion came, I, I think at one point I was like 75% like I'm going to get an abortion and I think that was just because I was really young and I, I didn't know what the heck I was going to do. Um, I didn't have an education at that point, I didn't have a job, I was with my parents, you know, because I just came back from college. Um, and so I was like, what, what am I going to do? Like, how am I going to raise this child? And, and so that's kind of why, that's where the abortion was coming from. And I was just really scared that it was going to ruin my life. Um, and, but long story short, I, um, ended up coming to the decision where I was going to keep the, I was going to keep my child and I was going to raise my child and I was going to do the, the best that I could for my child and um, I had a lot of support. I had the support of my parents. My mom did come around obviously and um, yeah so I you know I was able to live with them. I was able to figure out what I wanted to do with my future and go from there. Um, so basically uh, let's get into the pregnancy. Um, so the pregnancy with my son um, with I knew he was a boy from almost the beginning. Um, with his pregnancy, I had a very strong intuition. I had a very strong connection with him um, that I didn't have with my other pregnancies. Um, so his was a little bit different in that aspect. But also, um, you know, I didn't have a significant other. I, you know, I was by myself. Um, but... Um, Everything went really well. His pregnancy was extremely easy. Um, I was happy. I was healthy. I was glowing. I loved being pregnant with him. Um, I, I wasn't sick at all. Like, not even an ounce of nausea, nothing. I was constantly hungry. Um, I just, it was a great, great pregnancy. Um, and it didn't really get difficult until I hit 32 weeks and when I hit 32 weeks that's when I went into a doctor's appointment just a normal doctor's appointment and um, I just everything you know midwife was checking everything over and doing everything 
you know, a normal, at a normal doctor's appointment. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, like out of the blue, I just started having contractions. And at first, I didn't really know what they were because I'd never been pregnant before. Um, but it was just like, it didn't hurt. It was just tightening. Um, just a lot of super hard, like, tightening. And then it would be every, like, couple minutes. So um, the midwife that was there, um, she had... Um, told me to go upstairs and to get monitored so I went up there and I was getting monitored for it was probably I was good I was probably up there for I don't know maybe 30 minutes or so um, and they monitored me and I was having contractions every two to three minutes at that point and they, like I said they didn't hurt but I was having consistent contractions and they were worried so um, they ended up giving me a shot in my arm I do not remember the name but all I remember is that it made my heart race so fast and I did not like the feeling at all. Um, but they said that this should help, you know, things die down. So, um, it did help. Um, my contractions got down or up to like every 10 minutes or so. So they were comfortable enough, um, sending me home. And they said if, you know, they start going back closer together, um, or anything changes to call them. Well, it was not very long after that. I think it was like by the end of the day, um, I started having those consistent two to three minute contractions again. But I'm like, they don't hurt and they're probably not doing anything. So I just said, hey, whatever. And this at, at the time, I mean, at this point it was like eight or nine o'clock at night. So I was like, I'm just gonna go to sleep. They don't hurt. If I can sleep through them, I'm sure they're fine. So I slept and it was fine. Um, it seemed like they had died down. Obviously I slept and wasn't having any contractions. But the next morning um, they started back up again and I had to start timing them again. And I had timed them for about a good hour, maybe hour and a half. And they were still about that same two to three minutes apart. And so my mom's like, you should probably go back in. So I went back in. And I think I was there from 8 o'clock. No, sorry, I'm sorry, not 8 o'clock. Um, I was there from, I think I went in at like 10.30 or something like that. I don't really remember. Um, and I had been there all day. And I was there at, till 8 o'clock at night. And they were trying to stop my contractions. And they weren't successful. And I had start, started to dilate to, I think I was like a centimeter dilated. And I was thinning out. And... They started to get a little bit worse. They were starting to get a little bit more painful. And so they said, at this point, we've done everything that we can do. And if this child is going to come early, then we would like you to be uh, at a hospital where there's a NICU. Um, and so they had rushed me by ambulance to a bigger hospital. And they had been they had been giving me um, what's called magnesium sulfate. And they had given me, like I want to say, like two bags or two and a half bags at this time and they just weren't dying down and so um they had continued to give them to me through the IV as I was on my way to the hospital and um so I get to the hospital and they continue to give me I think they gave me another bag well this stuff I would never wish for anybody to have this stuff on my like at all like it made me feel like I was completely out of, like, not in control of my body. I was very groggy. I was very, it just made me, like, like feel like I was delusional. Like, I was loopy. It was just awful. And I was, like, it felt like I was 150 degrees. Like, I was, like, sweating. Like, I was so hot. And it was just the worst feeling. And I just hope I never have to have that again. But anyway, um... So eventually they did, the, the contractions did die down. Um, I wasn't, I was having them kind of sporadically at this point. And so, and I had not progressed past one centimeter. And so they were like, um, they kept me for like another day. I think I was in the hospital between both hospitals for about maybe, f I don't know, three or four, three days, four days, something like that. Um, they had done an ultrasound at that hospital to make sure that he was um, doing everything he was supposed to be doing. He was healthy. 
Uh, he was practicing breathing. I got to see that. It was pretty awesome. So um, I got sent home with some medication. I was supposed to be taking every day to keep the contractions from not coming back basically or um, speeding back up again and getting regular. Um, well, that medication um, did not make me feel good at all. And um, oh, and I forgot to add, they did give me steroid shots for um, his lungs just in case he would come early. So hopefully that was um, to develop his lungs. Um, and so, yeah, I ended up stopping taking that medication because I said, you know what, like, I've done all the precautionary things. If he's going to come out, they said he was extremely healthy, and they said that if he was to come out um, at this time, that he would probably only be in the NICU for, like, a week because he was doing amazing. And so um, I was like, you know what, I'll, I'm going to leave it in God's hands, and if he's going to come out, he's going to come out. And so I ended up having contractions every single day for the next two months. And it was just, I'd walk around and they didn't hurt or anything. It's just, I just have, and they weren't always consistent or anything. I just, I constantly was having contractions basically um, the, over the next couple months until I gave birth to him. And so let's go to that, that point. So we'll speed up to that. And um, I was on basically modified bed rest um so I just couldn't like do like marathons or walk around a bunch or I mean I was able to like you know kind of um you know kind of just stay in the house or stay around the house but like if I was gonna go up get up and like walk around the grocery store for an hour I couldn't really do that kind of thing and so it was called modified bed rest um so like I said, let's speed up to, um, I was 39 weeks and, what did I have? I'm 39 and 5, so I was almost, almost term, um, and I had went to another doctor's appointment, hopefully my last doctor's appointment, and my midwife looked at me and she was like, she was just shocked that I was still here and I was still pregnant. Uh, she thought that I would have had him weeks ago, um, just because of like the progression that I was having. And at this point she checked me and I was uh, seven centimeters or she could stretch me to seven centimeters and I was 100% effaced. And she said, this is like technically active labor. Like you should be in active labor. You should be in pain. This is very strange. <laughs> so she, um, she talked to the doctor and she said, yep, yeah, let's send her upstairs and let's get this thing going. Um, so I went upstairs and we started the, well, we didn't really technically start the process, but we had prepped me, you know, they had taken blood, um, and they said that they actually had like three C-sections to do first. So I was there like all day just kind of hanging out um, until they were able to just like come up and break my water and get things going. Um, but what was funny, and this is a little bit TMI, so if you want to skip up, skip ahead, you can, but um, I was very constipated in this pregnancy, um, and there would be times where I'd go a week or more without um, going to the bathroom. So at this point, I had gone, it, was, it had been a little bit over a week or so uh, that I had not gone to the bathroom, and they said, excuse me, um, they said, why don't we give you this, I don't know what it's called, like an anemone or fleet thing, I don't know, and they stick it up, and you, you're you supposed to hold it together as long as you can, and then you go to the bathroom, and it's supposed to just flush you out, and so I said, okay, so they did it, I went to the bathroom, and it was just, just flushed right out of me. And as soon as, I remember this feeling, it's so weird, um, as soon as I stood up off the toilet, all of a sudden I felt like just a drop, like just whoo, like he just came right down. And it was kind of weird because she was, it, because the nurse was like, um, that was kind of weird. I said, yeah, looks like um, he was, there was so much built up that it was like holding him up basically. And I just laugh about it now because 
it's so weird, but um, I honestly believe, because as soon as that happened, I started like having contractions and like, you know, going into labor finally. So um, I really believe that like that was what was kind of holding him back and um, it's really funny. Uh, so anyways, um, they came in finally. Um, I don't remember what time it was. But, um, she broke my water and I was eight centimeters and I was like already in transition at that point. And so there was no breaks between contractions. And, um, he was born at, uh, I think I, it was 15 minutes of pushing and it was a total of two hours and 57 minutes that was with pushing. Um, and he was, and he was born. So he was born at, um, on August 15th, 2012. Um, at 5.57 at night, so it was almost 6 o'clock at night. Um, so it was pretty quick, pretty easy, um, and yeah, that was, that's the story of my, um, my first child, so, um, yeah, he is now almost 8 years old, he, um, he's a handsome, very, very handsome little guy um, and he's he's the best thing that ever happened to me he saved me um, from from going down a really bad path I believe um, just with all the stuff that I was doing and, um, in college I don't know I just really feel like he uh, he saved me from a lot of things that could have happened um, and as much as, obviously, if I could go back and, you know, be smarter and, um, you know, change things, I obviously wouldn't get, you know, get pregnant if I didn't. Uh, I probably would have been a little bit more careful. Um, but I don't regret him. He is one of the best things, obviously, besides my other children that has ever happened to me and my husband. Um, and I love him with all my heart. Um, and, yeah, so that's the story of my Easton. So if you um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe for more stories, more videos that I have coming out. Um, and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.